1953, Earth experienced a war of the worlds. Common bacteria stopped the aliens, but it didn't kill them. Instead, the aliens lapsed into a state of deep hibernation. Now the aliens have been resurrected, more terrifying than before. In 1953, aliens started taking over the world. Today, they're taking over our bodies. Somebody stole her purse. What a pity. No one is helping her. Leave me alone. Make me! Yeah, make him, pinhead! Got any money for us, creep? wonders to behold. Our scientists have concluded that the filthy, inferior beings on this planet are hopelessly combative. Meaning? Meaning that in time, these parasitic cretins will inevitably destroy themselves. Our scientists are certain of this? Based on statistical analysis, there is a 96.875% probability that the human race will eliminate itself as a direct result of tribal warfare. All the pathetic creatures need is a push in the proper direction. We need immediate action, Commander. Not subtleties. Not wishing to disagree. Then do not. But direct intervention has failed us time and time again. It would be more accurate to say that it was you who has failed us, Commander. Be forewarned, Commander. You must not fail us again. Earlier this afternoon, a Russian aeroflot carrying a delegation of nuclear scientists arrived in San Francisco to take part in the first stage of the historic U.S.-Russia Mutual Disarmament Pact. Three days of meetings will precede Friday's dismantling of the Pershing II missile warhead manufactured in nearby Silicon Valley. Officials of both governments are hoping that this, as well as the simultaneous dismantling of a Russian warhead by American scientists, will spell the beginning of the end of the threat of nuclear confrontation between the superpowers. It's the beginning of the end, all right. I guess all this mushy peace talk kind of makes guys like you obsolete, huh, Colonel? You've got it backwards, Norton. Nuclear warheads are the only guarantee of peace we have right now. Colonel, would you mind enlightening us on that one? Look, figure it out, Harrison. 
The Soviets outnumber us four to one on conventional forces, ten to one on tanks, three to one on surface ships, two to one submarines. The threat of nuclear retaliation is the only thing keeping the Reds from knocking down our fence and stomping all over our cornfield. Assuming, of course, anyone wants to stomp all over our cornfield. You're not really that naive, are you, Suzanne? You think I'm naive because I don't share your twisted view of the world? Paul, I think you're a little naive yourself, don't you? Blackwood. Look, in the real He's world, the strong Thanks, dominate the weak. Always have, always will. Darwin's theory, Suzanne. Somebody starts swinging a club at you, and you better have a club of your own to swing. Well, I guess that takes care of politics. Anyone care to discuss religion? This is Harrison Blackwood. And this is Katya? Katya. Where are you? Where else but San Francisco? Don't tell me you're part of the Russian delegation. Well, the appointment surprised me as well. Dr. Uh, Jacobi at the Pacific Institute was kind enough to give me this number. That was okay? Oh, completely, completely. Harrison, I must speak with you. What's wrong? Um, not over the phone. Of course, of course. Katya, look, you can't come here. I'll, uh... I'll come into the city. I'll... No, no, no. Tomorrow, uh, lunch at the Stratford Hotel, okay? Goodbye, my dear. Such frivolity, Dr. Rhoda. And what is that, Major? You choose to use payphone rather than the one in your room. Even the KGB must agree that it is inappropriate for our government to pay for my personal phone calls. Is that not so, comrade? As conscientious of you, comrade Rhoda. I shall make note of that in my report. I'm sure you will, comrade. two tickets to the Grateful Dead concert on Friday. You interested? Sorry, I have other plans. Uh, that's too bad. I know. I love the dead.
stay right there. I mean it. I'm warning you. Now. Attention. Attention. We are now in a yellow alert. Good morning, Doctor. Where are you going? Out. Any place special? Yes. Harrison, are we going to play 20 questions, or are you going to be more specific? I can be more specific if I want to be. Look, Harrison, that's not the way we do things around here. One of my jobs is to look after you. Now, how in the hell am I supposed to do that without your cooperation? Unless I misunderstand the rules of the game we're playing here. I'm not a prisoner, and you're not a warden. So if you'll excuse me. Mind if I join you? Harrison. Gotcha. Isn't this the hat that I bought you in Paris eight years ago? Well, I wanted to make sure that you would recognize me. Been a crowd, gotcha. With or without a hat. Well. Why don't we sit down and you can tell me what's wrong? self-annihilation? I stake my very existence on it. No, Commander. You stake our existence on it. To life, immortal. One, Captain. You have the photographs and my report. I expect an analysis and identification on the double. No, I do not want General Wilson informed. Not until I know what's going on myself. Yes? Norton here. Could I have a moment of your time? I'm on my way, Norton. Twelve kilograms of weapons-grade plutonium was stolen in front of 20 witnesses. I think it was the boldness of the act that caught our attention. Then you're somehow suggesting that the aliens were involved in this. Aren't you reaching, Doctor? I'd like to think of it as an informed guess. Well, keep on this, Mr. Drake. Let me know if anything new breaks. No problem, Colonel. Take this device to those who will be responsible for its placement. As you wish, Commander. Remind our comrades that nothing can interfere with planting the device in its proper location in the time allotted. I hear your command.
get Harrison. Oh, no, you won't, young lady. Dr. Blackwood doesn't wish to be disturbed. Okay, I'll go get Mom and Norton then. Oh, Colonel, you startled me. I'm just about to serve dinner. Not right now, Mrs. Pennyworth. Harrison, you've got some explain. Is something wrong, Colonel? Where the hell is Blackwood? Damn it. Debbie, go have dinner now, please. But, Mom. Immediately. Come along, Debbie. Now, Colonel, what is it that has you so hot and bothered? Washington just replied to an inquiry I made, Mr. Drake. It seems that since 1980, the good doctor has had a girlfriend no one knew about. I don't know how the hell we missed that in the security check. Aren't you blowing this just a little out of proportion, Paul? I mean, if he's got a girlfriend, isn't that his business? I'm not talking cheap thrills and Valentine's Day cards, Suzanne. This girlfriend is an important scientist. An important Russian scientist. Dr. Rhoda? Dr. Rhoda! Please open the door this instant. Open it. I'm going to see that Harrison pays a heavy price. Aren't you taking this a little too personally, Colonel? Why shouldn't I, Norton? I'm personally responsible. If Blackwood goes down or this project is jeopardized, I'm the man that has to do the explaining. I've known Harrison for a long time. I'm sure he has a logical explanation. Right. Logical as in, sorry, folks, I've got a better offer. Maybe I'll consider defecting to the other side. You have no grounds for that accusation. Why are you so quick to defend him? You know, the heart can make a man do funny things, Suzanne. Gertrude, front door. Gee, reception committee. I want an explanation, Blackwood, and I want it now. Do you mind if I start with an introduction first? Colonel, everyone, I'd like you to meet Katja Rodin. Katja? Paul Ironhorse, Suzanne McCullough, and Norton Drake. sight. Get out of the van. What's the problem, officer? Stolen vehicle, for starters. Theft of radioactive material. All right. Everybody out of the van. Do it. My friend, she isn't feeling very well. Out. Now. hands on the vehicle. Spread. Come on. Move it. Okay, lady. I gotta see your hands. Lady, you gotta put your hands where I can see them. If you say so, officer. <laughs> Did you have a pleasant day off to nowhere doing nothing? Well, you know, while you were out, Norton picked up some information about a theft in a nuclear power plant. 12 kilograms of weapons-grade plutonium. Suzanne feels that the aliens may be involved. Suzanne and Norton are on top of this? They are. Well, then there's nothing more we can do. Harrison. 
You have a lovely home. Well, it's only a loner, but um, we're getting to like it. You must be completely crazy bringing that Russian here. I'm not. I mean, this is supposed to be a high security location occupied by people doing high security work. I know. I thought what we were doing here was important to you. It is. Well, then, what the hell was going through your mind, Harrison? Katya is also important to me. Now, she wants to defect, and I agreed to help her. Well, why the hell didn't you take her to the immigration office, or, or to church, or to the CIA, or, or to a movie? Why the hell did you bring her here? I did. Did what? I took her to a movie. I wanted to make sure that she wasn't being followed. It's very nicely decorated. Did you do it? Uh, I'm a microbiologist, uh, not an interior decorator. I'm a nuclear physicist, but I still enjoy decorating my flat. Look, the Soviets considered Dr. Rodin very important to the scientific community. Besides, she wasn't ready to go to those places. Not yet. I made a judgment call. We're not talking about a defecting hockey player here. This is international scandal time. It stinks, Harrison, and you're in it up to your eyebrows, and you're taking the rest of us with you. as close to the site of this afternoon's historic initiation of the U.S.-Russian Mutual Disarmament Pact as the press, or anyone else for that matter, is allowed to be. Security forces are taking no chances. The area is being cordoned off and is heavily guarded. The weather was clear and crisp. Everything was perfect, except for Harrison's paper on dwarf stars. <laughs> I was taking part in an international science convention. And during my presentation, uh, this young woman kept on raising her hand and challenging my thesis. Thesis? It was more like fiction. <laughs> anyway, after I was through, Katya cornered me and told me just how very bad my theory was. For about a moment before my sitters led me away. Sitters? Sitters, keepers, KGB. You know what you people call thick necks who keep us Soviets in line. Except I wasn't finished correcting Harrison's paper. And I wasn't finished correcting her correction. So I sort of helped Katya slip away from her sitters, and uh, we continued our discussions in private. I didn't get back to my hotel room for three days. In fact, this is the first time I've been let out of the country since that weekend. Oh, battle stations. I'll let you know if it's anything important. If you will excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, Gertrude, to the office, if you will. What does he mean by battle stations? Gotcha. I'm, I'm sorry. There are just a few things that we can't discuss about our work. I understand. The device is working in a place, Commander. You have done well. We are nothing without your counsel, Advocate. We must plan for the future. A future without humans. How large an area will be decimated by your thermonuclear explosion? We are not exactly sure, Advocate. Not sure? Our best estimate indicates a kill range of 30 miles. With a population of... With a population of? We believe 10 million humans, Advocate. That all? This is only our first attempt. What we learned here, we will multiply across the world. You have done much to advance our cause through life immortal. And now, the future. It is just a matter of time before this planet is ours. Shall we choose the next targets? 
should look at the maps. They will tell us where the greatest concentration of life is. Time is on our side. Hey, Mr. Mister! You forgot. Forgot what? Forgot to put money in the parking meter. You get a ticket if you don't put money in the parking meter. But I'm a policeman. Nobody's gonna give me a ticket. But my mom says policemen have to follow the law, just like everybody else. Thanks for reminding me, miss. Can I do it for you? told me who you were, but getting a message to you proved to be most difficult. My people thought it wise that we have this meeting. Colonel Lucida. Iron Horse. I'm told that's an Indian name. It is? Yes. We have Indians in our country, too. There are some who believe that our Indians and your country's Indians are related. Maybe. But I didn't come here to talk anthropology, Major. No, you're correct. We have much more important things to discuss. Signal is definitely alien, and nearby, too, judging from its strength. I don't like the sound of that. How long until you have that broadcast point triangulated? Any second now. The computer is crunching the data even as we speak. Ah, voila! Now all we have to do is match these coordinates with the map files, and... Now that is a whole lot closer to today's disarmament conference than I would like to see. What could the aliens be planning? Paul, join us. I think we're onto something here. We have to deal with another matter first, Harrison. Dr. Rodin is going to have to go back to the Soviets. What? Why? This mutual disarmament pact is just too important to jeopardize. Both her governments and ours feel that a defection is a bad idea at this time. Oh, they do, do they? When exactly would be a good time for them? That's not for me to decide, Harrison. I'm sorry, but there can be no sanctuary here. Both governments insist that Dr. Rodin be returned to the Soviets in time for today's disarmament ceremonies. What if I call General Wilson and threaten to pull out of here, pull out of this whole project unless he supports Katya's defection? That's a negative, Harrison. The general asked me to tell you that if you feel that strongly, he'll respect any choice that you make. But he wants you to know that the work we've begun here at the cottage will continue with or without you. Well, at least the general has some more integrity than I gave him credit for having. Well, he wants to help, Harrison, and believe it or not, so do I. But this damn disarmament thing, it's just too big. 
The entire world is watching the two greatest powers on Earth dismantle their nuclear arsenals. Now, agree with it or not, we can't let any politically sensitive incident detract from that effort. Okay. Just let me be the one that tells you. Hi, this is Rita. I need a tow truck in the parking lot at Century and 12. Thanks. Your colonel is quite right. This nuclear disarmament is much more important than any individual's freedom. I'm sorry. I wish there was more I could do. I even threatened to quit this... what it is we're doing here. If they didn't agree to help you, but they still refused. Well, if they knew you as I do, they would know that you would never quit. You see, I have... I have been watching you. And I know that you're working on something that is completely taking you over. And until you're finished, I know there's no space in your life for anything else. You're a very perceptive woman. Come on. Let's go enjoy these last few moments together. Three tickets is enough for a tollway, especially with the disarmament thing going on down the street and all the extra security. Then when I checked the plates against the computer, I saw that the vehicle had been reported stolen. When I got here, I, I had to jimmy the lock so I could release the parking brake. Uh, that's when I saw the bomb sitting in the back. What you think is a bomb. Oh, my God. The threat of nuclear terrorism has taken on a new dimension today. Silicon Valley. We were just coming to find you, both of you. And the site of this afternoon's U.S.-Russian disarmament ceremony is currently in the grip of the Local police have stumbled on what appears to be a small atomic device. So far, no attempt has been made to move or defuse the device for fear of causing it to detonate. Authorities in Washington and Moscow express both surprise and revulsion at whoever is behind this act. Well, we don't have to wonder what happened to that stolen plutonium. And according to sources inside the Kremlin, Soviet forces have also been placed on alert. Civilians within a 20-mile radius of the bomb's location are being evacuated, but local officials fear there will not be enough time to make the evacuation complete. Officials in the capital have so far refused to comment on Moscow's sudden suspension of the U.S.-Russian disarmament pact. What time is your ceremony scheduled? At three o'clock, right. Do you think that they would have planned the bomb to go off at three? Wouldn't you if you were them? But it's almost 1.15 now. Oh, my God. There's no time. I've got to inform General Wilson about this connection. Connection? What connection? Connection to what? clear that the Soviets are placing full blame on the U.S. for the bomb which continues to threaten the Silicon Valley. Our military forces struggle with the threat of possible detonation. Harrison. And the complete evacuation. Did you know something like this was going to happen? are now beginning to deal with the political ramifications. Not entirely. We had reason to believe that something was going to happen. Not this exactly, but something, yes. You knew something would happen, and yet you did nothing to stop it? This is Bob Dunn reporting from the White House. Katya has got to know. She's got to understand what it is that we're up against. Gertrude, back five. Now look, I'm all for detente and glasnost, and you show me yours and I'll show you mine. But isn't telling your friend a little bit like taking an ad out in a newspaper? That's a chance we have to take. He's right, Norton. If the aliens are involving the Russians, then we have to, too. For all our protection. Otherwise, they can pit one nation against the other. Or else they're going to sit back and watch us destroy ourselves. Now, Katya has to return to Russia, right? At least if she knows what it is that we're up against here, she can be our counterpart over there. You planning to discuss this with the colonel? What the colonel doesn't know.
Katya, it's time that you know exactly what it is that we're doing here. Oh, God, I wish I was someplace else. All gotta be someplace. Might as well be right here. Only take whatever is essential. Everything else stays. Helicopter will be here inside 15 minutes. What's going on? General Wilson wants us all evacuated from the fallout area. Our project is too important to jeopardize. Notice he said our project and not our lives. Gertrude, to the office. You'll be coming with us, Dr. Rodin. We'll return you to your people as soon as we've gotten to safe ground. Katya has something to say first, Colonel. I would like to disarm the bomb. And I'd like to be president of the United States. Forget it. We have experts flying in from Utah. There might not be enough time. Especially if detonation has been timed to coincide with the original three o'clock schedule. Besides, you're forgetting. My entire career has been spent building nuclear devices. I might be able to disarm this bomb. No one can ask you to do this. No one has. But you can't afford to turn down my offer either. No. We stay with the original plan. What's the use of protecting the world against aliens if we're not first willing to protect it against ourselves? Less than five minutes left on the timer. I'm going to go with the timer first.
Thank you, Grandfather. Yes. Now for the hard part. We do the same thing with the wires on the motion switch. This is truly a most astonishing piece of work. Unlike anything I've ever seen before. This is it, Norton. One. Two. Wait. Harrison, what happened? We have the wrong green wire. What do you mean, the wrong green wire? General. It's time, Harrison. Just saying thank you doesn't seem enough. It's enough that you chose to confide your secrets to me. Is it going to make a difference? I think so. I know a small group of scientists will be only too happy to reopen their old records, to study the aliens. I'm going to miss you. And I you, Harrison. Dr. Rodin, I've just spoken with General Wilson. They've decided to relent. You've been allowed to stay in this country. Please thank them for me, but I've changed my mind. But why? Just call it a woman's prerogative, Colonel. But, Doctor, the repercussions. I don't believe that there will be any repercussions. After all, am I not an international hero? <laughs> You have some pretty amazing friends, Harrison. Don't I, though? I've misjudged the raking earthlings. Both their ingenuity and their will to survive can take comfort in the knowledge that your efforts will be revered forever and all time, Commander. And so, new Commander, tell us what plans you have to rid this planet of its repulsive inhabitants. 